I'm very excited today to present to you a special interview where we meet not one but two special guests, two IPS officers, two women and what they both have in common is that they have a, a background and that is very, very exciting and they've both shaken things up in the arena that they've been there. First of all, we have from Bengaluru, we have DIG Rupa. Now, DIG Rupa has been in the news. Everybody knows her, but for our viewers who've been living in a shell, I'll just recap it for you. DIG Rupa has shaken up the system because of her revelations about what was happening inside Bengaluru Central Jail, where she said that bribe of two crore rupees has been paid to give special facilities to AIA DMK leader Shashi Kala. Now, of course, that was an expose which everyone took note of, but she's also ended up getting transferred after those revelations. And the next guest, of course, is someone who has come out in support of DIG Rupa, that is former IPS officer, Kiran Bedi, who is now governor of Puducherry. She joins us from Raj Bhavan over there. And why Kiran Bedi is the right person to interview with DIG Rupa is, of course, Kiran Bedi, as usual, has been shaking up things in Puducherry as well in her new role. Thanks very much to both of you for taking questions, for taking time out for NDTV. And I have, of course, a whole lot of excited students here with me in the audience who have so many questions for both of you as well. DIG Rupa, if I can just start with you, I wanted to ask you, how are you doing now? You've made all these revelations. You've exposed those pictures were also seen of Shashi Kala's kitchen cell. Those ex you know, those revelations were shocking. They shocked the entire system. You talked about how not just the special kitchen, but also how Telgi, Abdul Karim Telgi of the stamp paper racket, even he is living in what seems to be apparent comfort because he's getting massages in jail and the kind of drug racket that is there. But you've been moved out because of it. How are you doing in your new assignment? I'm doing well, I'm doing good and uh, I'm very happy to be here, especially uh, joined by Madam Bedi. Uh, I revere her a lot and uh, she also tweeted in support of me and she also tweeted that uh, now it would be time for her to join the new post and carry on the good job uh, as well in the same, uh, at the same tempo. And, uh, I have done that, uh, I have followed orders of the government, I have joined the new post and uh, yes, that is more of a traffic and road safety job, Is uh, mine is a desk job where I assist the, I am a staff officer to the DG, I assist him on how to prevent road accidents and how to make our roads safer and I am at it. You know, Deaji Rupa, when I saw your transfer order by the state government, what struck me was that instead of, yes, they've set up an inquiry committee to look into the revelations that you've made, but instead of fixing that, what seemed to be the problem was that they said in your transfer order that you're speaking too much and that you are speaking illegally to the media. Now, that seemed to be a small problem, but do you believe that you've been transferred out because you've shaken too many feathers, that you've upset the status quo, that you've tried to change the prison system? No, I have nothing to comment on the action of the government of uh, transferring me out. And uh, I would only say I have, uh, I, I did my job there also. I had no vested interest. Uh, I joined whatever I saw and what, whatever was in my knowledge, I reported. And uh, after transfer, I've again joined the new post. I didn't, uh, many advised me to go to Central Administrative Tribunal. Uh, to get a stay on this uh, transfer order, but no, I did not do that because I have no vested interest in any job. Wherever they have posted me all these years, I have followed orders and uh, joined and that's what I did. Governor Bedi, you're listening to what DIG Rupa has to say and of course we saw your support on Twitter uh, uh, towards uh, DIG Rupa. She, of course, is bound by the fact that she's a serving officer. So I appreciate that she's speaking to us on camera, but she's constrained by being by her service rules. 
Do you believe, ma'am, from what you've seen uh, out of a lifetime of service as an IPS officer, do you believe or suspect that she's been transferred because she's made people uncomfortable with her report? I think there are two ways of looking at her transfer. First of all, what she exposed, which was very commendable, was the right thing to do. What she did expose was her duty to do. And in fact, when she did her duty, and it was an exposure, instead of her being transferred out, she should have been asked to go and see more, report more, and correct more, if we wanted the system to be corrected. Instead, she was asked to move out and ordered an inquiry. Her, her situation is so simple. Anybody could have walked into the prison the same night. The DGP could have done, the Home Secretary could have done, the Chief Secretary could have done, the Home Minister could have done. They could have all walked into the same prison that day and see what she had reported. Was it read? That's it. She didn't need to be transferred. On the contrary, she should have been encouraged to report more, go and see more, because Bangalore, Karnataka doesn't have one prison. Karnataka has many prisons. It's a state full of prisons. It's not like the hard jail where you had just one in one complex. We had about four or five prisons at that time, and today there are more than 10. It's one complex because Delhi is a unit territory, it's a city state. But Karnataka is spread out. So it's, as DIG prison, she could have been asked to go and clean up the system, if it is. And this could have been checked the same day. Instead, what I noticed, and which I, uh, which I found very strange, that she was instead moved out. And instead being asked, why you spoken? Why have you written? Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you keep quiet? Here is an officer who's done her duty, a duty well done, and exactly what the society wants, what the leadership and government and the rules want, and an officer to do her duty well. And she did it with conscientiousness. So she's right. What is the, her vested interest? So instead of she being encouraged, appreciated, recognized, and made into a rather a example for the others that this is the way you, ha you are here to do your duty, you moved her out. Moved her out. Though she, what her approach has been, well, I will do my best wherever I am. But the question is, uh, what are we sending the message? Message is, do not expose, do not speak, do not write, do not question, do accept what you are. That was the message which is gone. Even though her transfer to another assignment is equally valuable. It's a traffic police assignment, whatever work she does. The question here is, her moving out yes. for an exposure, which, which apparently, visually justified, established that what she was saying was right. And you know, Kiran Bedi, ma'am, you are, for, for these kids, I'm just telling these kids because they may not remember or recall from those, uh, you know, newspapers, but you are the person who cleaned up Tihar Jail. You know about prison systems. In fact, I was working on a book uh, behind bars and all the inmates that I met, they say that the last time that things were clean in Tihar Jail was when Kiran Bedi was there. But I just want to take what you said to DIG Rupa as well. DIG Rupa, I know that you're saying you can't comment on that, and but Kiran Bedi ma'am has said what so many people are thinking, that the kind of message that they've sent to you. Another thing that I was speaking to officers uh, about what happened to you, and they point out is, the people who criticize you is, and just clarify on that, they say, why didn't DIG Rupa, why didn't she, if she saw this, why did she make the allegation of bribery directly at her senior officer? There are internal mechanisms. So they're throwing the rule book. Do you think this rule book of why do you need to speak about it openly? Why don't you go through the internal mechanism? Was that suggested to you? Uh, well, let me uh, put forth like this. Uh, this post of DIG prisons was created in 2010. It was a new post. for the. It's a carded post, which means IPS officers can be posted. And uh, after one year after the creation of this post, um, an officer was posted who stayed on there for one year. And then later, two officers were there who, who served there for just a week each, only a week, each of them. And uh, I was the fourth officer. And I joined three and a half years uh, after it was lying vacant. And in the creation order, 
unfortunately, there is no uh, powers jurisdiction mentioned about this post. And uh, the Prison Act is old enough, uh, it, it's a very old one and it only speaks of the power of IG prisons. IG prisons is the designation which the Prison Act and the, the, the manual mentions um, who can take action, any sort of administrative or disciplinary action. So there is no mention of DIG uh, post in the rules and manuals. And orally, I was told by the boss that I do not have any powers to suspend or take any kind of action uh, on the uh, erring staff. So what do I do? I report. And um, that is what we are taught, even in the academy. Whatever you see, place it on record. And that's what I did. And I also had an inkling, I had a knowledge. Since I was posted to this post in January, I was on sanctioned leave uh, and I joined in June. There are, I'm a member of many WhatsApp groups. So there was one case uh, of uh, election commission bribery case and there was, it was in my knowledge that one of the uh, persons examined in that case has spoken about something with regard to the Bangalore, the Bangalore prison. And uh, from there the lead had to be taken and corruption angle has to be investigated even now. Uh, and, and, and that is what I said that these things exist, the special treatment and many other irregularities exist. And naturally special treatment when it exists, you know what, what would be the reason to give somebody a special treatment are they unless there is the, exchange of the, money the or whatever. special team, are they looking, that is what I said. are they probing the bribery angle, who received the two crores? I know you've talked about the witness who said it was paid. Do you believe they are now looking at the money trail or are they only looking at the wrongdoings in prison? I have no idea, I have no clue. Uh, because uh, Anti-Corruption Bureau is the one who has to look into this Anti-Corruption Bureau of the state which has to investigate into these charges of corruption. And uh, are you scared I of the defamation notice you have got? Uh, as per my knowledge. Yes, uh, I got the defamation notice, but def defamation is not made out um, in the first place. It is uh, in the discharge of my duty, whatever I have done. And I have said about this that money has exchanged hands uh, for this. And that is what I have reported in the, re put in the report and handed the report to, addressed it to DG only, boss. It is not that I have sp spoken about it elsewhere or anything and that is why defamation is not made out. It and I have replied to it. No, you sound really brave about this, but a lot of the kids over here have questions as well. And before, before I just go to that, you know, Madam Bedi, I wanted to ask you, this DIG Rupa story came about at the, at the same time that Baikula jail happened. The same time a custody death, and there's a probe going on there as well. So two probes going on over there. Do you believe that things in prisons have improved at all since the, I think about 20 or 30 years ago that you were there. Do you think things have gone on or, or is it still the same? Is it still the dark area that it used to be, that all kinds of things are happening there? Uh, in my experience, the prison management, we may have documented more policies, we may have initiated more training programs, we may have invested into infrastructure buildings, but when it comes to internal management, it varies from leadership to leadership. I think the key is who is leading the prison. And as Rupa says, the prison manual, uh, the Prisons Act recognizes the DGP or the Inspector General. It all goes by the leadership. If the leader is uh, so so socially conscientious, humane, kinder, believes in reform, believes in prevention, believes in correction, rehabilitation, things improve. But if he is distant or she is distant from this, these factors, the prison suffers the way Rupa has detected and the way things have happened by Kula. I've seen where the leadership walks the prisons daily, looks at prisons with the sensitivity, encourages reporting, encourages the feedback, things come under control. But if the officer is distant from the prison, not easily accessible, doesn't walk the prison, is not encouraged and not interested 
uh, in the happenings and only wants to react and protect, then things suffer. And that's what's happening. So it goes by the leader. So wherever you had a good leader, things have changed. Wherever you had a, a, a not a good leader, things have deteriorated. So you've been more reacting or more in punishing inquiries, uh, etc.